two years ago we introduced our first platform, which is the Trail Path platform. We called it Voima, and then we introduced Vikkele. Now we introduced our Gravity platform. We have named that bike Onni, and this is our S Onni, and as a nickname Sonni, which means a bull. However, we want to differentiate these uh, two families. This is our gra gravity platform, and this is our trail platform. When we started Pole, we found out that you can use one platform to create multiple bikes. It doesn't really make sense to create bikes with 10 millimeter uh, difference in, in the travel, and then call them different uh, names and disciplines. What we have found out is that people have different um, wishes how they could ride and you can actually modify the bikes by components mainly. So for example, if I want to go ride trail, it, it doesn't make sense uh, to buy another bike for it if, if your bike is capable of trail riding. What makes sense is to have another wheel set, maybe, with lighter tires. The lighter tires make the bike roll easy, and therefore you, get, uh, you go easier forward. Also, you can add pressure to your shocks, and you can uh, have more ground feeling. So, instead of uh, reducing the travel of the shock, we have created our uh, leverage ratio, so that you can um, put your uh, sag, for example, to 27 uh, or 35. So you can have different feelings uh, from the same bike. So what does it mean in practice to have a, a one platform and then change the riding category from, for example, uh, downhill to enduro or maybe down duro? Well, well, we call this bike a down duro bike because it has a downhill fork and enduro drivetrain. So if we change the fork to this Seb, then we could call it enduro. Uh, what is different then uh, with the bike with the 12-speed um, uh, drivetrain? Well, for example, the price. So if you are only going downhill, there's no point of getting a T-type SRAM uh, derailleur and cassette in the rear. The GX uh, DH uh, derailleur and cassette is so much more uh, value for money if you're only going to the bike park and uh, do some downhill. And if, if you think about your, you want to go uphill, then get the 12-speed uh, cassette. Then you can do big climbs. I raced this bike actually in Transmadera, won the Masters category with it uh, without no problem pedaling the whole event. You can check the status from transmatter.com. So what is different between these two bikes? So this one has 190 in the rear uh, and this one has 200 uh, in the rear. Now this one is uh, set up as a mullet and this is set up as 29er. You can just change this rear wheel without any other modifications to 29er. We have optimized the geometry and the bike works really good. Both have Sensei suspension. Uh, gravity platform has huge main pivot axle. So this is stiffer than the race axle here by standard. Also uh, kinematics on this one massively pro pro more progressive. The suspension works so good. From the top, the small bump compliance is, is really good. Mid-stroke support is very good, but it, it is harder to use the whole travel. With Voima, you can easily use all the travel. So that is more compliant when you go slower speeds. This one is harder with uh, uh, slow speeds, but it's not harsh uh, if you want to pump this pumps better. Then we have the external uh, battery charging uh, input, which is here. And with Gravity Platform, there's none. So we decided to uh, not to put there. So every time you want to charge it, you need to take off this battery. 
don't worry, we have a keyless option uh, available as well. So you don't need to carry the key, just uh, Allen key is enough. Here in the trail platform, we have a torsion box, which is uh, going around the battery uh, opening. Here we have new technology. This is patent pending technology again. We have uh, double-sided walls. So this bike is slimmer, uh, roughly eight millimeters slimmer than uh, this bike. So when you look from the top, you see it uh, very slim. So if we compare uh, the downhill version, this one, this one is not much uh, uh, thicker. We might ma make it even thinner for the production, but I'm not uh, pr promising anything yet. Uh, links, uh, these are uh, also hollow, both up and down. They use similar joints, but here's a different. We used uh, different axles. So these are also patent pending uh, design. So there's a press fit axle that goes into the link and there's double bearings again, uh, but the, these bearings are smaller. So we decided to go with the smaller links. Uh, these, uh, this one is easier to service. We redesigned it uh, and it's even easier. I'm not saying this is hard. This is easier than anything out there, but this is even easier. It's fast to change uh, if you need to get this uh, uh, swing arm off. It comes in in a couple of seconds. Also, the these uh, main pivot bearings, you can get access them in, in, in a minute. Not, not, uh, you don't need a lot of uh, time for that. Then, uh, one more noticeable difference is, is that uh, if you look at the motor, we have maximized the cooling surface. So this is when you pedal hard uphill long periods of time, um, the more closed the motor is, the uh, sooner it starts to fade the, the power. We will have a cover for it, uh, uh, for uh, rock strikes, uh, and I can guarantee again that when you look at it first that, oh, you're gonna catch something here. No, you won't. Uh, we have used uh, we have uh, so many of these uh, sliders here, we can see where the hits are uh, at the bottom. Um, you can go over it. I, I've been riding this mullet and I don't have any, any hits here. Uh, the only hit is in the side, uh, in the crank. The, the clearance for the tire is roughly the same. That is, uh, again, a good thing, so you don't need to uh, worry about that you are getting uh, caught uh, with mud if you if you have that kind of an area. This one is lighter uh, and because we don't need to make any compromise uh, on it we can make it lighter and, and, and stiffer at the same time but not too stiff. This is aluminum it's not uh, overly stiff. It, it's compliant and uh, it runs really good. This is uh, I, of course this is not in production but roughly I would say one kilo lighter than than Voima because of the double-sided sidewalls. That makes it uh, makes us possible to create it so much lighter. Let's see how, how the end, end result is, uh, but anyway, that's a quite big gain that we can, we can make. Um, yeah, the downside is that you can't put bottle mounts, you know, so backpack it is then. Okay, here we have the trail platform without the motor and the same thing, uh, gravity platform without the motor. So now we have the motor on, motor off uh, thinking on different platforms. So the same chassis as the e-bike version. Uh, here we have, uh, you can see the difference. There's a massive opening, no opening, and the down tube goes directly to the lower link and here we have a small curve, so we can have uh, room for bottles and other accessories there. So the reason for this is that we want a stiff bike and uh, also a light bike at the same time. So we created this massive main pivot bearing, so 
uh, if you look at it, you go straight line almost to the um, rear axle. So our trail platform is more compliant. You can have the bottles. Um, and the similar features are there. You have a lot of room for, for tires. Uh, this one is a mallet now. Uh, gravity platform is, is uh, optimized with the geometry that you can change the rear wheel without any other modifications. And trust me, it's going to be fine. It's, I mean, not fine only, but it's, it's great. I, I just uh, uh, changed the rear wheel, went for a ride immediately. Like, wow, this is a, the best benefits of 29er. Uh, just just by changing the wheel. I just took the cassette off and put it in the wheel and off we go. And uh, the feeling is so that you have so much more grip and it goes over stuff. But when you go back to the uh, 650B in the rear, then you're like, oh, now I can again uh, slide the rear end a little bit more into the corners and you have that playfulness. Uh, it manages easier and uh, all that. Trail platform is more about uh, compliance, so this one is easier to ride slower speeds and uh, it's, it's more uh, forgiving in, in rocky, rooty, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, the, the gravity platform is more like straight shooter. You kind of know when you need this kind of bike. This is a progressive design. It's supportive, and, uh, uh, but it's not harsh. It works perfect, like it's really, really good. And just to say here, this is precision machining. Like we have 0 0.01 plus minus out of surface in all of our bikes. They all are the same and all the axles go straight into it. There's no binding and everything. We can really uh, promise that all these bikes are always the same as designed. Okay, some other details uh, that people are asking often. Colors, the same. You can get this raw clear. Uh, same here. Storm gray and true gold. All these bikes it can uh, be ordered with these colors. Uh, also, the new T-Type is com compatible with uh, all the bikes across. We have been using it for a while, so our older bikes like Stamina is also compatible with the T-Type. All the bikes can be ordered with a protective film. This is something what we, we do here at factory. You don't need to worry about applying it. It's strong film that protects your frame from scratches and all the uh, grime. And uh, yeah, there's more customizable parts now. So we offer fenders, hand guards. So uh, keep an eye on our website. There's m more coming. 10 years ago, we founded Bolle Bicycles with a couple of ideas in mind. One is transparency. Second, that we don't want to do unnecessary harm to nature or people. And also we want to make awesome bikes. So now we are here, we have our factory where we make these uh, frames and we CNC machine these from really strong aluminum. This is, aluminum is almost twice as stronger than conventional aluminum and we bond it together uh, with adhesives that have been used in aerospace industries for a long time. So why aluminum? Why not carbon fiber? Okay, this is a thing that we need to address. Carbon composites, they might be all the rave, but it's not a miracle material. It's also toxic. There's toxic chemicals in it and uh, you cannot recycle it. Some people said it could be recycled, but there's no business around it. Nobody's taking care of that. And all carbon composite uh, products are being landfilled or put in a place where they are waiting for future that somebody miraculously can make something uh, about it. But aluminum, metals, they recycle forever. You can melt it and make it in another product an infinite amount of times. The best benefit of it, however, is what it gives to you, the rider, is the accuracy. 0.1 millimeter from here to here. 
plus minus. So, it, and also variances are 0 0.01 millimeter accuracy. So, and, and they're made with one hole. So all the bearings, all the axes go straight how they should be, and that creates better riding uh, characteristics to this bike. It's always the same as it should be. Here I'm going to explain what makes this bike exceptional in technical point of view. Well, most people don't even need to do this ever, but I'll show how easy it is, for example, to take off this side of the swing arm. So I'll just unthread this one axle, like so, and then I remove the rear axle so we can see what's going to happen. Okay, that took me a couple of seconds, and now you can see that the swing arm is already off. I would need to only take this one bolt off, and this would be off. Okay, I'll show you one more thing. So here's the main pivot. So if we want to take off the main pivot here, we just open this. So here, now we have the... the <laughs> Oh, swing arm is off. How cool is that? Now I can, uh, I don't know, maybe change the grease, uh, service the bearings if you like. And okay, uh, your middle of your race run or whatever. Uh, then let's go back. Let's put it back on. So, so what do we need to do? Just thread it in. Now, we didn't even need to remove the, uh, the derailleur. We just put that axle back in. Let's put the rear axle first. Rear axle is there. And let's thread this in. These are press fit. So this won't get loose easily. Yeah. And there we go. So also this one is easy to take off. So all these parts come off quickly. And it is easy to service and and uh, these all are high precision at the same time. So everything fits. The axle goes straight in like you saw, there's no binding or anything. So this is high precision. Let's talk about battery opening. So most batteries are installed by sliding. But that's not very easy, isn't it? You need to turn the bike over and then unscrew something or something. So we're using this. Uh, it is fast. And how the other uh, manufacturers are explaining why they only use the sliding mechanism. They say it's lighter. Well, we have a solution how this opening is, is actually lighter. So uh, the brackets, they only weigh a few grams, uh, like 100 grams. That's, those are not, the, those, those are not uh, uh, heavy. So how to make the bike? stiff. So if you look at this, I'm squeezing it as hard as I can. You hear the sound? So we make hollow sidewalls to this uh, bike. You could add, add material and you see some, some uh, aluminum bikes and also carbon bikes. They have more material here. We don't need to do that. We can do hollow sidewalls. And um, the reason why this opening, uh, you don't see many of these openings, is that it's hard to make it precise. Again, the high precision that we make makes it possible that we don't have any adjustments here for the brackets. They are there and, and uh, there's no need for adjustment. So that's why you can just get the battery and put it in. And this always looks the same. The double-sided uh, double sidewall, how to say it, 
like hollow sidewall. That is uh, patent pending again, uh, and uh, we do it with our bonding method. So there's this. This is uh, there's a uh, two walls that run here, and they make virtual uh, wall thickness up to uh, seven millimeter, five millimeter. Let's see what is in the production, but that is a lot of uh, uh, stiffness just right there. So uh, this bike is special by its CNC machining, but all that bonding technology that we have in house, the surface treatments, and there's so much uh, technology in this, this bike. The suspension, how the kinematic works, the geometry, how, the, how, how we can make it so uh, compliable that you can change the rear wheel and it, if you start riding you don't feel weird it's it's right there where you want it and it's everything has been well thought the how it pedals great climbs great it turns great uh, and uh, everything is connected everything like uh, how you build it how you service it and and everything is uh, hand to hand designed which is, uh, with, with other features in mind. And again, I want to say that we are still designing this cover, so we want to have a... We're not covering it all the way because we want that airflow here. We just want to have something that if you have a strike here, uh, you're not uh, damaging the motor. However, what we found, uh, really found out is that you rather damage this than the frame. The frame is actually more expensive than the motor. So, so uh, <clears throat> let's make just a slider there. Okay, I hope, I hope you enjoyed this. See you later.